So I'm doing some repairs on my Fluke 343A again. Now I actually pulled this thing apart the other day to put the dielectric grease in all the switches because I did that repair where I had issues with the switches being dirty and needed a bit of a revamp again. Because I cleaned it all at the time but I didn't have put any lubricant on these switches because I didn't, didn't have anything suitable. So I pulled it apart, put some dielectric grease on and then I had a problem with one of these shafts which go from the switches onto this board here. It broke. It's actually due to manufacturing fault. This has actually been repaired before, it's got glue over the outside of it. But you can see all the bubbles in it. All these bubbles in there, they're not supposed to be there. That means that material was wet when they made that particular part. So that is a really, really bad one. That should not have been produced, really. It should have been thrown away. Here's another one, which is what more like what it should be like. Okay. Now this one has got some defects as well. It's got some little crack marks in this end here. There's actually flow marks where it's got a gate, which is where the material goes into the mould, just here. And you've got some flow marks away from that. It looks like it's got cracks through it, so I've taken this one out as well. The reason I've done that is because I'm making some more. So I've got my 3D printer running right now. I've designed a replacement part, it should be dimensionally the same as this. And I've got that printing right now. So this is on Thingiverse, I did it on Tinkercad. So it's on my Thingiverse now, so if you need to get one of these shaft extensions for your Fluke 343A or 341A, or possibly other Fluke devices too, I don't know if it's anything else. But this is a 45mm extension. Now I've dropped it on 4 now, but I'll pick it up in a second. This on my thing of us, if you need to print a new one, just go and grab it and download it and print yourself a new one. As long as you've got a 3D printer, you can do that. Or if you know someone that does have one. Now the other problem is, these standoffs here are made from the same material and they're very brittle. They don't like having stress put on them. And if these standoffs get over tightened or stressed at all, then they fracture. So I already had one that was broken when I first got the unit just here that was broken and there was another one that's broke just now and I was pulling it apart undoing the screw it just fractured just fell apart this is what's left of one of the sandals it's got these brass inserts in them and I've got this nylon standoff kit and they're all different lengths so you can actually mix and match and get a standoff of whatever length you want really within one millimeter tolerance so I've used those and I've made a new standoff here and another one down the bottom there so they're both exactly the right length so those two standoffs have now been replaced the rest look kind of okay um, if they ever fall apart, they've still got a way of fixing So one of the hardest things about fixing this is getting it apart in a way which doesn't mess up all the switches. You've got to take the top and bottom covers off. You've got four screws each side. You've got to take those out, which then allows you to move the panel. You've got to disconnect the joiners over here on these two. There's two couplers here. You've got to take those off. And then you've got to take out all the screws that hold that board on that side, or that side of the stand off, so that, that board take those screws out so that ball can then float because this is attached to the chassis over here this other main switch then you can pull the front forward whilst trying to keep this in place at the same time so this is this is going to be floating because it's got those extensions in there it'll just float on those extensions this will be a little bit careful if I pull this off the edge of the bench a little bit more it'll fly a bit more all right so it's going to float around those extensions then you can just get enough movement out of it to pull out the one which you need to replace or ones you need to replace you can make a new one like I'm doing, and then you better slide it back in again. Right now I've got two screws holding this front panel on so it doesn't just fall off and hang off it. So if I take those out, I can actually slide it forward and get those shafts in and out easy enough. So these shafts are only for these particular adjustments here, those switches. This switch here has got a different shaft on it, it's longer. But you might be able to stack them, I'm not sure, I haven't actually looked at that. But that, in my case right now, that one's alright, I haven't got anything wrong with that one. So I'm leaving that one alone. Unless you've got reason to mess with it, then don't. These things are old, this is almost as old as me, this thing and it's a bit fragile and creaky so you've got to treat these things really carefully so like I said this one's badly made that should never have actually been let go and that's what is more like should be in there but. so I'm making some right now of PETG PETG I'm using I'm using that because it's a bit stronger than PLA but tougher a bit more forgiving so I'm going to use that and hopefully it works okay we'll find out I suppose fingers crossed it looks alright be nice to finally get that done so down by the main switch here has been repaired previously by somebody else this has been soldered together some metal bits of copper copper tube or something. Also you had standoffs in there before which were broken and they did this robust repair I suppose but it's not perfectly straight if you try and turn the shafts it wiggles a little bit so okay it worked but it's not great. And down here is another plastic standoff which shattered on me when I was first got this thing. I was turning the switch and it just fell apart so I've actually epoxied all around it so it's got epoxy shielding the outside it's all glued together and epoxied so hopefully that doesn't give me any problems in the future that one's a bit awkward but it's not like these ones which are a bit easier to deal with so hopefully it never gives me any trouble at least now i've got a 3d printer i can actually make new parts right so i've made the piece let's try to do a test fit see if it actually goes in okay or not 
Now we'll get this all sort of wiggled around a bit so I can actually get the shaft in. Right, let's see if I can get it in here. It's all a bit tight to get in. I did do it with a little bit of clearance, hopefully it's not too much clearance. So let's just see where we go. I'll slot these back in again. Move it around to get the switches back in. Like that. Let's get this shaft here on. It should just pop on, hopefully. The clearance might be a little bit too great, but it's, I'll put it away, but, but I think the clearance is a bit too big on that shaft, so I might actually just adjust the sizing very slightly. So it's working. And the tolerance on this end is nice and snug, so I'm not too worried about that being too tight. Um, once I've got the alignment right, it just obviously saw it popped straight on. But the alignment on that shaft there is a little bit loose, it's just got a little bit of slack in it, it's not much. And if I, I can turn half a digit, maybe I can turn a half of one before it starts to move. I think that's probably not good enough. I need to increase this tightness a little bit because that isn't quite moving as far as it should. So I need to tweak this very slightly. I need to make that slightly fatter, get that tolerance down, and that should be all right. The reason I actually made it quite loose in the first place because 3D print does tend to over the white, so I did actually make the tolerance. I think it's about 0.15 millimeters lower than what I'd measured in order to make sure it doesn't bind. Obviously I've gone a little bit too far with that. I'll measure it and see what tolerance I've got compared to what I actually designed it as. Because I'm using PETG instead of PLA, so it's a bit different to what I normally use as well. So as you can see, it's almost finished printing. It's like 97% done. It's just about there. So this is version 2, which as mentioned has got very slightly thicker to try and reduce those tolerances to make it just a little bit tighter fitting on actual switch wafers. So hopefully this one will be a little bit better in the 3V2. This thing looks alright. Using a 0.4mm nozzle on it. Not as precise as I'd like. Because my other Indy 3, my original one's got a 0.2mm nozzle on it and that does really really precise, but this is good enough for this. So let's fit this shaft here, it's the one I've just made, I've already done that one and it already fits in. I'm just going to fit this one in, hopefully it goes onto the other shaft as well, I'll just clean it all up. Get lined up to the switch, slide into the switch first. There we go, and we'll slide the assemblies together. Just gently wiggle it around. So start lining up, then I can slide these other ones which I just made onto these other shelves. There we go, let's go on. Get this one on. Okay, both of those pushed on fully now. Just push all those home so now I can actually slide all this together and try and just wiggle it all. Get it up. It should come down, sit onto these standoffs. Right, get this side panel screws in first. So the screws are two different sizes, these ones have got little locking washers on them, little spring washer things, star washers I suppose. So these other ones are slightly bigger on the front edge. So that's this side, I did the same thing for the other side, and then I can start putting the uh, standoffs back on properly. And hopefully no more than break whilst I'm trying to put it together. Alright, so I've got all the screws back into this ball, the standoffs are still intact, no more standoffs broke, which is great. I put these couplers back on here, so these are lined up quickly now, I have to make sure they've got the number lined up correctly with the little dark area on the front panel so you can see the number correctly just by getting this lined up right and also for the one down the bottom here for the range switch make sure that lines up correctly that's that done it's back together I've got to put the covers back on again yet and obviously test it prove it still works okay in case if anything horrible has gone wrong it's always possible you never know with these things it should be good now so I've actually made a spare space I've got those two spaces in there one of the ones which wasn't completely broken it's just like it's got cracks inside it and one of the ones I've made a spare one are tucked inside here this little bag in the side here so I've got spare ones and there's also this switch here and I've got it there's like a ball bearing and a bit of spring steel which of the mechanism on the back of this which had come off it's got only one spring steel left on it we have switches got two it's easier much stiffer to turn this is a bit easier to turn it still seems fine, it's still like indents correctly and everything, so I don't really see what it needs to anyway. But the actual parts which fit out of here are in this bag as well. So if I ever do decide to reinstate it, I'll, I've got the bits here to put it back in. I probably should have done it when I had it apart, so you'd be thinking about it, but I would never really bother me. I, I actually like the way this one feels instead of how this one feels. 
I'll have to test it and how much it goes, but that should be basically it. Thumbs up, subscribe if you're not always subscribed, and check out the playlist at the back end. Um, I've got playlists about this particular unit, and I've did the original repairs, and I've done a few repairs on this thing. Check out the playlist on this particular device, and obviously my test gear playlist as well for various repairs. Catch you later.